and all of the all the tags work that way. There's an opening tag and a closing tag. And for example, this is a table. Tables are used very commonly in HTML to do um, to do layouts to put things in rows and columns on a web page uh, to help with graphic layout and also to help with uh, data presentation. This is a uh, table tag. It's got a border of one, so that the whole table will have uh, a small border around it. And that's the ending tag. And inside that, we have TR, a table row. And then inside the table row, we have a bit of table data. And then we have another row and some more table data inside that. And then another row and some more data inside that. And we close up the whole thing. Um, so learning tags is what uh, the HTML is all about. And here's a basic minimal format. Uh, very often you'll see tags nested inside of other tags. Uh, HTML generally starts with an HTML tag and then all of that ends with an HTML tag. Um, and inside the HTML tag, very often to start out you'll have a header uh, which uses a beginning and ending, a starting and closing head tag. And usually in that head tag is where the title is included. You have a title tag and then some title text. That's what appears inside the Title bar up at the top here, um, and uh, so that's all nested inside the HTML. And then outside of the head tag, we've got another tag called body, and that's where most of the uh, web page actually exists. That's where uh, the things that you see appear on screen in the browser exist. In this case, we have some HTML uh, text and, and formatting. Uh, and that little web page will look like uh, will look like this. So you see at the top, there's a page title, and also shown in the tab, and then the text that we put in the body appears on the page. And um, CGI uh, applications um, work the same way. They're just code. And it's important to understand that the way this works is that uh, this is text just like rebel text or any other code that you that you deal with you can edit it in the rebel text editor uh, you can rebel it or edit it in a, a windows notepad or in any other text editor our text editors are set up to make an easier uh, view of starting and ending tags but you can use any text editor you'd save this as a text file for example if we save this file in notepad as your page.html uh, you need to get it up onto your web server somehow. That file, once it's saved to the hard drive, needs to be copied to your web server. And usually you use an FTP program uh, to do that, or you might use uh, uh, some facility that's built into your web server. Uh, a lot of hosting companies have uh, web pages you can go to to upload files onto your web server. But somehow you have to transfer it to your web server. Um, when you do that, you surf to your web server and, and to that specific page. So you search to or um, surf to http colon forward slash forward slash the name of your web server dot com um, and then you go to your page dot html whatever it is in this case I've uploaded it to my guitars dot org website I put it in the folder rebel and then I named that file tutorial example one dot html and uh, when I go to that place on the on the internet I see that page and the browser is a program that knows how to format and how to display uh, documents that are saved, text files that are saved in the HTML format. And uh, it knows what to do with this. It knows to put that title up in the, uh, in the title bar, and it knows to display the info that's in the body on the web page. And it knows what to do with the bolding tags and so forth. It knows, it knows how to display tables. And it also uh, knows how to connect, use your network, your existing network connection to connect to that, uh, to that website, to that URL. That's all any web, web page is. If you look at the source uh, of this page, you'll see that uh, this is just a bunch of, a bunch of text, uh, a little more complex, but for example, you can see here's the ending of the head and here's the title. This is the HTML of the actual page that you're reading. It takes quite a bit of uh, HTML to make it look that way, but that's all any web pages. I created that on my home computer and uploaded it to my web server, and that's what you're reading. CGI programs work the same way. Um, only CGI programs are actually programs. Um, um, 
HTML only requires a browser to be uh, interpreted. The, the browser opens up that page and it does the formatting right inside the, the browser. The browser program actually displays that. But um, if you want to write a program, your browser doesn't do the work. What does the work is the interpreter, and that sits on your web server. So again, you have to upload that uh, program. You have to upload a Rebel interpreter to your web server, and you need to upload one that's appropriate for the operating system that your web server is running on. Most web servers run on Linux these days, some run on Windows, but you need to get the appropriate Rebel version for uh, the web server that, that hosts your pages and serves your pages. You need to put that somewhere, and then in a Rebel script, what you do, again, you're just going to write some Rebel code, again, with the Rebel header. The very first line has to include the location to which you've uploaded your Rebel program. You need to have this default little line, and it's wherever, whatever folder, your whatever path you've chosen to upload your Rebel server to. We'll cover this a little bit more in the future, but uh, you need to put that Rebel, that Rebel program somewhere. It needs to be on your server, and in any program that you want to run online as a CGI program, you need to put the path to that um, Rebel interpreter. Then you put a Rebel header, and you put some Rebel code. In most, in most cases, what happens is you print out uh, some HTML. And uh, you need to have these first lines, basically, um, as is verbatim in, in all your um, CGI programs. You're going to see that in every CGI program. There's the path to Rebel, there's a Rebel uh, header, and then you have to print this line so that the browser knows that this is going to be some HTML. And then, typically, you'll see some HTML printed out. And in this case, uh, what happens is that Rebel uh, spits out some information back into the browser, and what it's spitting out is going to be what's printing out to your browser. When you go to this, uh, when you go to this CGI program, you upload this onto your web server, and the web server knows because it's called, you're going to save it as a CGI program, something.cgi. It knows, your server knows that when it opens up a CGI, it's got to look for that first line and then send it to the program that you tell it to send it to, in this case, Rebel. And it will print something out and that will go back into your uh, browser and be returned to, your, to, to the user that's looking at this CGI program. So, uh, in this case, we're just going to print some HTML and actually this is the HTML we just just looked at, I've got an example here uh, of, that, uh, of that actual CGI running online, and you'll see it looks exactly the same. All it does is print out some HTML which puts the page title and that same text up on the screen. Now that doesn't do anything new, but CGI enables um, all the power of being able to use um, uh, the Rebel interpreter to um, work with data in any way that you could work with data otherwise. So, in this next example, uh, we're going to do something we can't do with HTML. We're going to include the current time on our web page. So we go to this, um, we go to this page. I've uploaded that. I've saved it as a text file. I've uploaded it on my server. Uh, I've saved it as a, uh, tutorial example 3.cgi and put it in the Rebel, Rebel folder on my uh, server and it shows us the current time and this is not um, uh, you know, a hard-coded bit of information that appears on the website it's something that's printed out every single time this program is run so again we have some HTML code uh, it's printing out starting in any tags, it's got a header with a page title and this line prints out the text the current date and time is, and then it prints out the information that's returned by the now function in Rebel, which is the full date and time, and it closes up that body in HTML tag. So every time we run this, it's going to give us a different time. Uh, it says 47 seconds, uh, it says 50 seconds, and so forth. If you run this in a couple days, it'll have a different date. Uh, and so that page is dynamic. It provides some dynamic information to the user, and HTML can't do that. It, uh, it doesn't have uh, facilities for um, doing doing things other than uh, displaying information on the page.